Well, let's bring in my panel. We're joined by Jason Brodsky. He is the policy director at uh, United Against a Nuclear Iran. And Roger Fisk, a Democratic strategist and former Obama administration staffer. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Uh, Roger, let's thank start you. with you. As we just reported, the Trump administration reinstating all of those U.S. sanctions on Iran removed under the 2015 nuclear deal. Do you support the move? No. I think this is the classic example of the president being absolutely allergic to anything that's at all complex. If you look at how he has governed thus far, everything is reduced to utter, utter simplicity. So immigration is wall, trade is tariffs, and this situation is sanctions. That's all he knows. And if it, if it fits on anything larger than an index card, he is completely unwilling to embrace it. And, and Jason, I think maybe we can agree that the, anything, any kind of fix or solution to this situation, by definition, is going to be complex. And unfortunately, when you when you hang your hat completely on sanctions, we live in an age where companies can change where they're based and their nationalities and all those different things, so people can still find ways to do business, and and then and then turning around and, and granting these waivers for these handfuls of countries, I think, sends mixed messages. And the fact that the deal still remains, even though he re he referenced it as dead, he says it's dead, but it's very much alive, and our our main allies are still invested in it. So I think he's way off base here. Jason, do you support uh, the Trump administration's move to restate these sanctions? Uh, yes, I do, because uh, first of all, we see uh, this approach paying off uh, today with uh, the announcement by uh, Foreign Minister Zarif in an interview with USA Today that uh, the Iranian regime would consider talking now to the United States under the right circumstances. He was purposely vague about that, but we're seeing some softening in their approach, and that's because they know that winter is coming with regard to the sanctions being being reimposed on Iran. And uh, the U.S. has a lot of the leverage here, and the U.S. is not alone. Uh, there, We have our Israeli allies, and we have allies in the Arab world who are uh, with us in this approach. And not, it's not for, putting aside the EU for a second, European companies are heeding the administration's approach right now. Uh, we have uh, over 100 major companies that are refusing to do business with Iran. And SWIFT today announced that uh, they are going to uh, disconnect from uh, unnamed Iranian banks. We don't know their identities at this juncture. So uh, the approach is working right now, and we see some softening, as I mentioned before, in the Iranian approach. Uh, Roger, you maintain uh, that the president's approach to this is too simplistic, but let's take a step back here. The president is doing this because he does not think that the Iran and nuclear deal will, in fact, prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. That sentiment certainly echoed by President, uh, by the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, as well as a few other world leaders and here uh, members in, in, in the U.S. Senate. Now, Roger, do, do you believe that if the existing deal was still in place with the U.S. back on it, that uh, somehow when the sunset clause is expired, that Iran would have a change of heart and no longer want to wipe Israel off the map and no longer want to say death to America and death to Israel and, and all of a sudden give up its desire to have a nuclear weapon, because that was one of the main concerns, the sunset clause, as well as the fact that the limited inspections wouldn't guarantee that Iran was playing by the rules. Sure, but, but no diplomatic agreement is going to quiet the most radical voices in any society, and neither was that the goal. No one went, went in saying, if we can broker this agreement, that there won't be some fringe element of X or Y country that yells idiotic things at, about America. But the sentiment would that concern, is with the change, would, would the sentiment from the regime change regarding its desire for nuclear weapons and what it wants to do with them? Why would they change their mind all of a sudden? I don't think it would necessarily change their mind, but what, what we did was we, we slowed down and we stalled the day that they would get a nuclear weapon. And that was the goal. That was, the goal was to create a framework for a 10 to 15 year pause on their nuclear program. And with, with many, many triggers and verification mechanisms and things like that, it's not perfect. And no diplomatic solution is ever going to fit on a bumper sticker. But it had buy-in from all the relevant players, all of our allies and everyone that was at the table. Not, it had a transparent framework. 
Uh, Roger, it did not have a buy-in from Israel. Israel maintained that this uh, puts Iran, in fact, on the fast track well, towards I, I, uh, nuclear I, I weapons. Th I think We're going to have to pick up this conversation, though, after the break. Roger, stick around. I want to get more of your thoughts on this. Jason, as well, we will uh, be picking this up when clear cut continues after the break. And also ahead, the midterms countdown in 24 hours. We'll start getting results from hundreds of races across the country. Plus, the mayor of Utah City killed serving his country in Afghanistan. We will also have his story after this break. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Jeff Smith and I, 24 News. Brace yourself for your daily dose of news with top stories, sports, politics, and pop culture. There's more to the news than meets the eye. With the fast-paced, constantly changing headlines, we take you deeper bringing you fresh insights into the conflicts, breakthroughs, heartaches and victories shaping your world. Unpacking the day's main events from angles you might not expect. I'm Tracy Alexander. Join me for Perspectives. A24 News. I'm David Schuster and I-24 News. Join us on Stateside. It's our channel's flagship broadcast and it features our best reporting and analysis of news from around the world and from here in the United States. Watch Stateside, weeknights at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on I-24 News. The Middle East. I-24 News is a witness. Our journalists live and breathe there every day. Get all the latest global news from our studios in Tel Aviv, New York, Washington, and Paris. Anytime, anywhere. Download the i24 News app, available on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple, and Google stores. i24 News, see beyond. Watching Clear Card coming to you live from New York City. I'm Michelle McCory, and we are talking about the U.S. reimposing economic sanctions on Iran. Joining me is Jason Brodsky and Roger Fisk. Uh, gentlemen, let's pick up where we left off. And Roger, I believe it was with you, and I was making the point that Israel certainly does not support this deal, and Israel is uh, the main target of uh, Iran's desire for a nuclear weapon, if we are to uh, believe the Iranian regime saying that they want to wipe Israel's, uh, Israel off the map. Roger, Israel's uh, Netanyahu has also pointed out that, that Iran is uh, not complying with the deal. He's come forward to the United Nations, uh, showing evidence obtained by Israeli intelligence, the Mossad, that Iran is violating the deal, that it's based on a lie, that it didn't come clean, and uh, that it, the Mossad has found atomic archives and also a secret atomic warehouse. Roger, how can we be sure that uh, the Iranians are complying with this deal, given the limited inspections? And given the fact that the International Atomic Energy Agency has yet to act on this evidence presented by Netanyahu. Well, the prime minister gave a very kind of George W. Bush's kind of uh, presentation, at least um, in the spring, when he did more of a broad kind of a, a policy address about this, using a lot of examples that were four and five years old that were actually some of the reasons why this country engaged in this negotiation to begin with. Uh, this, a lot of the examples he used were three and four years old. Well, they, they, um, they did find so that Iran kept, uh, but just to clarify, the, he, he did find that Iran kept an archive in 2017. So that was uh, maintaining that information. Oh, yeah, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't say all. I said, I, did, I, I didn't say all. I said some. And so, uh, but I mean, a lot of our ability to even know what's going on there is, is, is the result of this deal. Um, and so, I, I, again, I guess I get back to the complexity of, of diplomatic negotiations as a category, um, which need constant monitoring, which need a robust 
State Department, for example, to make sure that there's compliance when our State Department is anemic at best. I think the legacy of Secretary Tillerson will be the absolute gutting and hollowing out of the State Department. So, yes, we could be in a much better situation for verification and site visits and things like that. But unfortunately, we have a commander in chief who thinks he's his own best chief of staff, his own best secretary of defense, his own best press secretary, his own best strategist. And they have been very reluctant to bring in the experts that are sitting in the State Department that should be uh, brought to bear on this situation. Um, so there's a whole level of the professional echelon of the State Department that's been gutted. And so it doesn't surprise me that we can't necessarily confirm or verify everything. Uh, when many of the many look, for example, the the we don't have a, we don't have an ambassador. Uh, in Saudi Roger, Arabia the, right now. Roger, the point right. was that uh, the deal can be verified from the United Nations, the existing deal, not that the U.S. couldn't verify. But Jason, I want to give you the final word here. We're wrapping things up. Do you think that ultimately this will force Iran back to the negotiating table? Uh, I think uh, Iran will inevitably come back to the negotiating table because uh, if we look at the Obama administration's approach when Hillary Clinton was secretary of state, uh, we had uh, Iran that came to the table because of the punishing multilateral sanctions that were in place at the time. And we're going to start to see the Europeans uh, realize that the special purpose financial vehicle that they're creating is going to be uh, equivalent to the third rail of the global economy. No country or company is going to want to get involved in it. And therefore, uh, it, it's going to be very difficult for the existing structure of the deal to remain in place for long. So I think that Iran will come to the table. And uh, those uh, attacks on European soil may uh, make the Europeans think differently. Jason and Roger, thank you so much. Appreciate you being with us on Clear Thank Thought. you.